Hello there everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm doing some of these videos for, for, uh, for my web shop that's called Nordic Anglers and today we're going to tie a tube fly. We're going to tie a pattern that probably is not that well known outside of Denmark but this is really really a fly that has caught an enormous amount of, of uh, sea trout and, uh, and salmon throughout the years here in Denmark. So, so, uh, so this, is, this is a deadly pattern. It's a, it's, it's a pattern mainly composed of, of hackles. It has no wing. Um, and this makes it a, a really, really nice moving, uh, lively fly in the water. Um, I have variated this a bit from the original. I've added some more weight to this fly and, and tied it on a tube. So, so I think it's more uh, versatile and, uh, and suits the needs that I have for most of my salmon and, and sea trout fishing better. It, it's called the wet hen or the, uh, the wet chicken. I'm, I'm not sure how, how, uh, how to translate that correctly, but basically I think the, the name refers to this is kind of uh, fluffy and it looks a bit mangled and, and a bit, you know, kind of like a, like a, 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 a wet fowl uh, in any way, in any case. So really, really an awesome pattern with a lot, a lot of fish uh, on its conscience. So, uh, so um, now we're gonna tie this, the wet hen. So now we're gonna tie the fly. Um, this is a fly that is made of three different types of hackles, uh, which is, is nice because they will move differently depending on current and, and stuff. Uh, so, so really, really nice, well-moving fly. Uh, the first ring we need is a tube, and uh, I'm going to tie on the pro tube, the, the pro classic tube in, in 2.2 millimeters now. Uh, this is the, 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 the tube fly system that I use a lot of the times I use for Dean as well and, uh, and propeller, but, uh, but, but for this pattern we're going to need a, a, a certain uh, weight that's really, really nice from pro sport fishing. Then I'm going to attach the tying thread. I just melted a small, uh, a small column down here. And, uh, and then we're going to use, uh, this is the only flesh that's going to be in the fly. Um, this is probably, uh, well, due to the fact that this is an old pattern, where probably there wasn't many flesh materials uh, available, but, um, but also this is m uh, my addition. This is not the, the, the original one, but I'm going to use some Mylar uh, Opal uh, flat tinsel. There we go. Just to give it a bit of bling. <laughs> yeah, that happens, you know. Just to give it a bit of bling. There we go. Just gonna turn this up here. Uh, this pattern is actually, for a long time, was the pattern that the, the largest sea trout in Denmark was caught on. It was, I think, 14 and a half kilos. So that is maybe 30, 33, 34 pounds. That's a pretty, pretty hefty sea trout, brown trout. There we go. And now we're gonna have the hackle. And, uh, and for this, I'm gonna use a slappen feather. Slap and feathers are the, the feathers that are uh, placed on, on roosters uh, below the, the saddle. So, so they have some very, very specific uh, characteristics. And, uh, and, and these are perfect for this first hackle here uh, because they're, they're fairly long and, and they're a bit, uh, they're, they're very soft, but they're still uh, quite distinguished in their, quite, quite thick in their, in, their, in their hackle stem. So it will make, it will make the perfect uh, kind of, uh, of, of hackle that we need for this first part. So I'm gonna tie this so the, the upper side of the, of the hackle here is, is facing towards myself. This will make everything easier when I, when I, when I turn the hackle here. And then of course you can vary this in, in the size that you want and you want to, you want to have your, your hackle to be uh, fitting of the, uh, of the actual size of, of that actual fly that you're gonna tie. So there we go. I don't want this to be too big or too bulky. So I think about this amount of hackle. I turned it maybe two, two, two and a half times. Uh, you don't want this hackle to be too, too bulky. Again, it depends on, on what water levels you're fishing and, and what water temperature you're fishing. Uh, but, but for this fly to work where I intend to fish it, um, I don't want this to be too, too bulky. There you go. You see, this is kind of almost spider leg like really, really nice hackle. There we go. And then the next thing we need is actually three things. We need some uh, some some gold rib. 
and then we need a, a, a body hackle and then we need some uh, osh, uh, some some peacock hurls the easiest way to tie down the rib is basically to to place it around the thread here and then you can pull it into position i like to have the rib placed uh, towards myself uh, because that makes it easier for me to place the uh, to place the hackle so basically if you want it placed on your side then uh, do that there we go Again, I'm not going to use that many turns of the tying thread in, on this stage of the fly because we, we're going to have a, a, a body that's made from, uh, from peacock curls and, uh, and in order to get that the right shape, then, then uh, if, if you get a too bulky part to where, towards where you tie down the hackles and, and, the, and the tinsel, that's also why I leave this on here for now. I don't cut the ends of anything yet, just yet. I'm going to take a brown hackle. Again, I'm going to fold this back. This is a rooster. So I have the tip here, and then I'm going to tie it so the tip, uh, so the, so the, the 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 most vivid colored uh, uh, part of the feather is facing me. There we go. And then I'm going to use all of this to tie down everything here, and and to try to make the body here as evenly thick as possible. And depending on uh, depending on how long you want your fly, you can of course vary it the length here. But you have uh, here you, you you when you decide this, you'll have to to take into account that we're going to add a bead, uh, and this bead is is going to take up some space as well. So so if you want a slight a smaller fly, then then you do not need a, a really really long piece of uh, of the body that is uh, that is uh, made from the uh, from the. Uh, from the from the hurls here from the like well, peacock from the peacock hurls so i take maybe f depending on how how dense you want your body maybe four peacock four or five peacock hurls is sufficient and i'm going to tie those th those down in the tip as well as close to the hackle as possible and then i'm going to tie these all the way up to where I don't need them anymore and now I'm going to cut them away then I'm going to take the uh, the hurls and I'm going to twist them so they will they will mingle up between themselves and this will make a stronger more durable body and I'm going to turn the hurls here if it unwinds then I'm going to twist it again I think that the reason why peacock hurls is so used in in the older patterns is because of the of the shine that they have. So so it's 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 one of the easiest way to use a natural material that actually gives some some kind of of light reflecting effect, kind of like you have from from flesh. But they didn't have flesh, so so they used peacock hurls a lot. I'm gonna turn my rib here. I'm gonna have three turns of the rib. So I, there we go. Cut away the rib. Then I'm gonna turn my, uh, my rooster hackle. I'm gonna turn my rooster hackle be just behind the rib. So the rib is gonna kind of shelter it from, uh, from wear and tear. And then I'm gonna do a full turn of the, of the hackle up in front of the, uh, up in front of the, uh, the end of the body here. There we go. Cut away the, cut away the, um, the feather. And now there's only one hackle left before this fly is done. So I'm gonna do a whip finish because we need to add the weight to the fly now. This has two purposes. It will get the fly to fish uh, deeper, but it will also keep the fly even out in the current. Because, um, because we have a lot of weight added here in the front, then it's gonna counterbalance the weight from the, uh, from, the actual, uh, from the actual hook, which is a good thing because you won't have a fly that's, that's you know, hanging in the water. So I'm gonna add some glue. There we go. And then I'm going to add the bead. This is a 
0.2 millimeter of flexi bead. There we go. Reattaching the tying thread, and now we need the 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 mallard hackle. And in order to pick the right mallard hackle, um, uh, mallard is is a material is a feather that very very fast becomes really really long, and the hackle stem also becomes quite quite bulky, uh, quite quickly. So you want to choose the right mallard feather, something that is not too big, because then you will get a really really an, an enormous hackle. You want something where where ideally all the the ends of the feathers has not been <laughs> torn and and worn down. And again, I'm gonna fold everything back here. And then I'm going to tie this so the front side of the feather is facing upwards or towards me. There we go. Apply a bit of pressure to make sure it stays in place. And then I'm going to turn the mallard hackle here. And this really gives a nice finishing touch to this fly. It, uh, it, it gives some, some more variation. It gives some more... Uh, a, a, a nice <laughs> a, a nice look to the fly and also the uh, the the mallard here has some some really really nice uh, markings on the feathers and i think the the mallard hackle is the reason for for the name of this fly because no matter how you tie down these mallard feathers it's going to look a bit mangled it's going to look a bit uh, 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 kind of like uh, you know a wet hen <laughs> No, I think that's it. Even though the the mallard here is not from actually is not is not a hen feather, it's 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 a duck feather. But still, so it kind of gives you that corona look to to the fly here in the end. So you have the red one to draw the attention uh, and to move at certain uh, water speeds. Then you have the uh, the 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 sea throughness and and also the shine from uh, from the uh, from the peacock. And then you have this kind of cloaking kind of ghostish looking. Uh, uh, hackle in, in front because this will go very transparent in the water so it will it will it will look like yeah ghost like uh, out in the water really really nice composition of a fly here and as i said this fly has just caught an insane amount of salmon and sea trouts throughout the times i'm gonna apply some sadagat here we go and then i'm gonna finish this fly off with a black comb head that covers up all the things uh, that the last tying points and it also helps protect a lot against uh, wear and tear on the uh, on the uh, on the front hackle the uh, uh, the mallard hackle here so there we there you have it the the wet hen um, the absolutely finishing touches of course to to take it out of the vise and melt down the column here melt down the tube to finish the fly there you go. And if um, if I could give you one recommendation for trying something uh, very different this year for your salmon fishing, then I think this one would probably be it. You will be surprised at how well this fly this fly fishes and looks in the water. So, as always, thank you a lot for watching. My name is Daniel, and uh, you can find the full material kit to this fly and to all the other flies on, on this YouTube channel in my web shop. It's called Nordic Anglers. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then that would mean a lot to us. Um, otherwise, I wish you all the best of luck out on the waters, and uh, yeah, good luck fishing. Thank you a lot for watching.